Hi and welcome to One Medicine. Today we'll talk about a skin tumor called as dermatofibroma. So this dermatofibroma is also called as benign fibrous histoma because it's a benign tumor made up of fibrous tissue with cells resembling histiocytes. So dermatofibroma is a cutaneous nodule of unknown etiology. So this cutaneous nodule that we see in this disorder. The precise mechanism for its development is not known. It is said to be a neoplastic process more than a reactive process. It can occur at any age, but most commonly affected is the young adulthood. So this is the most common age started presence. Uh, the male to female ratio is 1 is to 4. That is females are more commonly affected than males. It's a neoplastic process, a benign process. So clinically, we see a solitary, solitary that is single, round to oval, targetoid papule. The primary lesion would be either a papule, plaque or a nodule with the overlying skin showing range of discoloration. The overlying skin can be flesh to gray color to yellow color to orange, pink, red, purple, blue, brown, black or combination of hues. So there's this uh, single nodule or a plaque present here which can range from various colors like from gray to yellow to orange, pink, red or blue, black in color. So the swelling is firm to hard in consistency and it is fixed to the overlying skin surface. It is fixed to the overlying skin surface but it is freely mobile over the subcutaneous. So above it is fixed to the skin but below it is movable over the subcutaneous tissue. Tenderness may be elicited on palpation. This is particular sign seen here called as the dimple sign. So here there's basically there will be tethering of the nodule or the lesion, the overlying epidermis and underlying lesion with lateral compression. So if this is the nodule or lateral compression of this, there will be tethering of the overlying epidermis to the underlying lesion. There will be uh, dimples which are basically formed on the surface of the lesion because of the lateral compression forces that you apply. The sites most commonly uh, it is seen are the extremities that is the legs are the most commonly affected sites. It is usually asymptomatic but sometimes can be associated with pruritus and tenderness. Women who shave their legs constantly with razors have razor traumas there. So therefore that only can cause pain or bleeding or erosive changes or ulceration. But otherwise it is asymptomatic. Only if razor has caused any secondary changes they can be seen. Multiple tumors are very rare. Only solitary lesions are seen. Uh, multiple lesions if they are present then you have to suspect that the patient has SLE any autoimmune disorder or immunodeficiency like SLE, HIV, leukemia, organ transplantation or if the patient is on immunosuppressive therapies. So it is said that when these conditions are treated the lesions will reduce but also it is said that drugs which are used to treat these conditions can exacerbate the condition as well. So that is a contradicting statement that is said about this condition. So here you can see the lesion a solitary nodule present here with the reddish brown surface here again a hyperpigmented almost nodule present a solitary nodule on the lower legs that is the most common site that it affects the legs are the most commonly affected site and they will be asymptomatic also most of the time they will be asymptomatic sometimes burning into pruritus can be present there are certain variants of the condition present we have this acnemate type of dermatofibroma wherein multiple clustered forms are basically present multiple many many dermatofibromas together are called as acnemate type then you have joint dermatofibroma wherein a single dermatofibroma is more than 5 centimeters in diameter we have also the atrophic type atypical polypoid type dermatofibroma with satellitosis that is one dermatofibroma would be surrounded by many other small dermatofibromas that is satellitosis then we have metastatic dermatofibromas as well present most dermatofibromas they remain static for decades and they persist indefinitely so it is present for a very long time without any spontaneous regression most of the times but spontaneous regression or post-inflammatory hypopigmentation or sudden growth or increase in size may also be seen. So sudden decrease, sudden increase in size may also be seen in this. But mostly they are static for decades and they are still and they persist for a long time. Histopathology of these lesions will tell us them, will confirm the diagnosis. So in the epidermis, if you see in histopathology, there will be acanthotic epidermis with pseudoepithelomatous hyperplasia and basaloid proliferation, basal cell proliferation would be seen. And also there is this characteristic Grenz zone seen in this condition. So there is a separation between the dermis and the epidermis. This Grenz zone which is clearly seen which is overlying the tumor. Bulk of the tumor will be located in the middermis. So the tumor mass is in the mid part of the dermis here. And the tumor has no surrounding capsule. Capsule of the tumor is not present. The periphery of the lesion will blend with the surrounding tissue. There is no clear distinction between the tissue. And the old fascicle spindle proliferation, spindle cell proliferation with excessive collagen is seen. 
So this is spindle shaped cells with proliferate with excessive collagens which are deposited in the dermis. At the periphery of the lesion, the, the spindle cells will wrap around the normal collagen bundles forming collagen ball formation. So near the periphery of the lesion, if you see, there will be spindle cells. They will join the normal collagen fibers present here. They form the spindle balls. The That is the changes in the dermis that you see. Okay, So epidermis would be acanthotic with pseudopithelomatous hyperplasia, we increase basal cell proliferation, grains zone is present here and the bulk of the tumor is present in the middermis with the dermis changes would be there will be proliferation of the spindle shaped cells with excessive collagen deposits and there is no capsule surrounding it collagen ball formation will be seen in the subcutaneous tissue if you see there is uh, no change as such but if it is present story form or cartwheel pattern of changes would be present there are four histological variants uh, based upon uh, the dermatofibroma appearance so we have those uh, histological changes wherein arch architectural peculiarities are seen such as there can be a deep penetrating type certain differences based upon the histopathology deep penetrating type is present here there's this atrophic type which is present and we have the giant type present so all of these are the wherein architectural changes are present certain types wherein cellular or stromal down to fibromas it includes the certain changes present in the cellular architecture that is we have the clear cell type or the granular cell type or the myofibroblastic type or the sclerotic type the cells are different here okay so clear cell granular cell myofibroblastic sclerotic type then we have uh, dermatofibromas fibromas with both architectural as well as cellular or stromal changes it includes uh, epithelioid cell epithelioid cell type it can be bcc like basal cell carcinoma like changes can be present there can be multinucleate form present there can be plexiform xanthomatous type present okay lastly we have a combined dermatofibroma with two or more architectural or cellular stromal patterns in a single lesion in a single lesion can have both of the is present again so these are the archi uh, different histopathological categories of dermatofibroma so here in the histopathology you can see there's proliferation increased pigmentation of the epidermis and here's the dermal tumor which is present okay increased fibrocytes and histios fibroblasts and histiocytes would be present which is spindle shaped here and certain extension of the tumor inside the subcutaneous tissue also you can see this is the collagen which are depot which are trapped in the periphery of the lesion these are the uh, spindle shaped fibroblasts and histiocytes in the dermis. Usually, there is no treatment which is necessary uh, for the condition. Okay, no treatment is necessary. Simple reassurance the condition is benign is enough. Interlesional steroids have been tried. Surgery, if you want to do complete excision, including the subcutaneous fat, has to be done to prevent any recurrences. Inverted pyramidal shaped biopsy can be taken, it gives good cosmetic results. Superficial shaving and cryosurgeries have been done, but they are associated with recurrences. So, in the full tumor mass has to be removed to prevent any recurrences. But as such, it's a benign condition. There's nothing to worry. Uh, and uh, simple reassurance will help in most of the patients.